Hey guys, welcome back. I've got Squilliam here with me, who's a seemingly normal looking ball python, but we're here to tell you why his babies could potentially be some of the most expensive in the world. Hey guys, meet Squilliam. Squilliam is a normal ball python, or so it would seem. He is a potentially quadruple het male, and he is currently breeding with us with Bell a super lesser. Squilliam here is 100% het ultramel. He's possibly het lavender albino. He's possibly het piebald. And then he is possibly het monsoon. And if you haven't heard of monsoon, here's a picture of it in just its normal form. Squilliam being het monsoon, if mixed with another het monsoon or visual monsoon, could produce visual monsoon babies. And if you haven't looked on Morph Market lately, I would say monsoon is the single most pattern disrupting gene there is on the market right now. And it is also the most expensive. If you sort on Morph Market by only single gene animals and do from highest price to lowest price, I believe the top three or four are all monsoons. I saw them from $7,000 on sale to $11,000 not on sale. This is a fairly new gene and it was discovered by Dave Green and it is, in my opinion, one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Hey guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share this video with your friends. And now we'll get back at it. So Squilliam, we introduced this past summer. We picked him up. I wasn't even really looking for Monsoon at the time. I was watching YouTube one morning and came across a video with Austin from Mutation Creation. And Austin was describing how you can tell a Het Monsoon from a non-Het Monsoon. And they, I believe there was another video where Billy was cutting eggs saying this one's a monsoon, this one's not a het monsoon. So it got me intrigued to do some further research on how you could tell if a snake is het monsoon or not. And whether this is 100% foolproof, I do not know. And even Squilliam here, I do not know if he's het monsoon. He has a lot of good indicators that point to him being Het Monsoon. I'm breeding him right now so we can prove that out. There's currently no shed testing for Monsoon as of yet. It was supposed to be ready by this fall, but it, things have gotten delayed along the way with some of the work they're doing with other genes and the fast testing at the moment. But in the meantime, the plan is to move forward with breeding Squilliam and produce potentially a het monsoon female. One of the things that Austin said in his video was that they believe monsoon will be a co-dominant gene. They, they believe it shows that much pattern disruption and color change in the hets to call it a incomplete dominant gene. The first thing that you can use to potentially tell if something is het monsoon is to look at the darks on the snake, the blacks. And the blacks are typically a much deeper black on a het monsoon than on a normal ball python. This tends to be even more so in the darker genes. I'd say like leopard, probably your strangers, and blackheads, so on. So this is Matilda. She is also a normal ball python. And I don't know if you can tell the difference in the blacks there, but it's not showing as well on camera, but in in person, Squilliam has much darker black on his in between his alien heads. So that's one indicator to look for. And don't, I would not go solely by a snake and hoping that it is Het Monsoon on any single one of these Trait. The reason I got Squilliam is because he showed almost every trait I looked at and researched. The other thing with these Hep Monsoons is that it will show pattern disruption. And particularly where you're going to see these floating alien heads. Two or three alien heads chained together at a time. Like you see here. 
or even here, you're going to see pattern coming across the dorsal, like you see here, and ultimately, just overall, a, 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 typically it looks like somebody took something and kind of dragged the pattern backwards or forwards. You can see it in his pattern, he, if the camera will cooperate, there's a good view. It, it almost looks like somebody dragged his pattern and he's got the floating alien heads, he's got the chained alien heads that all make me believe that he is showing that trait. The belly is going to show, and on a visual monsoon it will show this checkering and particularly almost like a zipper like down the middle. You can see Squilliam here has checkering on his belly. Now this trait can be covered up by the bell complex, the blue-eyed leucistic complex, and it will not show the checkering particularly well, if at all. I'm gonna try and grab Matilda again here, just to show you her belly. So you can see she has some tracks going down the sides of her belly there, but no, come on baby girl, work with me, work with me. So this girl has some track marks going down her sides, but she does not show anything down the middle as far as that zipper-like checkering. The checkering on the belly along with the bell complex can also be covered up by cinnamon and black pastel. So if you, if you are looking at a cinnamon, black pastel, lesser, Mojave, any of the bell complex genes don't utilize the belly being that checkered pattern as one of the telltale signs. The next sign, and I just learned this one from a video from 403 Fauna, is the eye stripes. So the eye stripes on a Het Monsoon are going to be much thinner than that of a normal ball python. So let's see if we can get a good view. So you see Matilda's eye stripes there. And then let's see if we can get Squilliam. They are not cooperating at the moment. Come on, baby. All right. So you can see how thin his, his eye stripes are essentially, if he'll stand still, thinner than his eyeball. You can see it here. Here come my buddy. I'll have to hold his neck a little. They're just probably about half the width of his eyeball, as you can see there. Now with Matilda, I'd say they're closer to the width of her eyeball. Maybe not quite that wide, but close. A lot closer than Squilliam is. So that's that's another one. Now that one, you're gonna have to be careful if you add Krypton, I'd imagine. I have not seen a Krypton Het Monsoon myself. But if you know anything about me, I love those thick stripes that you get from a Krypton. So I don't know if you mix that with the Het Monsoon, how that's going to react. So just be careful of that if you're looking for that feature. And one of the final things to show is going to be the head stamp. So if you're looking at the head stamp from the top down, from the front, it looks like a paw print. If some people may describe it that way, I really don't see it that way. The way I've been looking at it is, it almost, the head stamp to me almost looks like the ghost face mask from Scream. And this isn't doing it justice. I'll try and get some B-roll here to give you a better look. But they got a really neat head stamp that, that like I said, it's gonna, if you're looking from the back of the animal, out towards its nose, it's gonna look like the mouth and the two eyes from the ghost face mask from Scream, in my opinion, or some sort of ghost face mask, like an evil smiley face, essentially. And this trait can be hidden by pastel or super pastel because you will get that, that blushing on the head with those jeans. And I'd be careful with any of those those lightning jeans that, that give you that blushing on the head. Fire Blade can do that. Squilliam, even if he doesn't pan out for us, 
We'd love to produce some ultra melt combos with him. And we will potentially be setting out his shed for testing to see if he is het pied and het lavender albino so we can see exactly what we're working with here. So guys, the question of the day, do you believe that monsoon should be a codominant trait? Is there enough of a distinction from a normal ball python to a het monsoon that this should be reclassified from a recessive trait to a dominant trait? I personally believe so. Just with everything we've looked at here, there's genes out there that are classified as codominant that are much harder to tell whether they are existent in the animal or not. Yellow belly, asphalt, gravel, lace. I believe all are tougher codominant traits to tell in a normal animal than what we're looking at with a het monsoon. Hopefully here in the coming months we'll have a monsoon test and we can prove out whether squilliam is het monsoon or not. But until then we'll stick with our plan of proving them out by breeding them. Leave us a comment down below. Give us your opinion on codominant or recessive. Don't forget to check us out next month. We will be at the Hiawatha Library in Hiawatha, Iowa for two shows, 40 minutes long each, one at 1 o'clock p.m., one at 2 o'clock p.m., and immediately after that, we'll be hightailing it to Tinley Park. Looking forward to seeing you out there. Check out this video here, and we will see you on the next one. Bye.